There's really one main factor that the IMF has pointed out repeatedly over the last several World Economic Outlooks. It's COVID. And it's the lack of even distribution of vaccines around the world that has caused many countries, especially in Asia, in Africa, in the emerging markets, to, to not get over the COVID infections as quickly as in the West. And because the West countries have recovered more rapidly, they are starting to resume life as normal. They're starting to demand the same services and goods as they had before. But unfortunately, the, they're part of the global economy and the global economy supply chain and the supply chain links are broken in Asia, emerging markets and key uh, transportation and logistics hubs. So even if the production was there in the emerging markets, you can't get it to the, to the developed economies because of these broken supply chains. So in terms of what's holding the economy back, it's all logistics and supply. And of course, as you talk about supply chain disruptions, whether it's container ships, whether it's a lack of semiconductor chips, truck drivers, etc. I mean, how has this all developed over this past year globally? It's sad how it, it's developed. It followed the trail of vaccines, uh, where there are sufficient uh, amount of vaccines and efficacious vaccines. The supply chains came back together again, and production started to whirl uh, pretty pretty consistently. Um, you look at China. China's production came back the fastest of all the economies because not only did China rely on vaccines, but more importantly, they relied on very draconian shutdown policies that prevented the spread of COVID. Other economies were not willing to take that kind of price, that kind of economic hit. And so they were much more lax in how they treated the infections. And as a result, uh, the, the logistics just ne never come together. So then given the uneven pace of, of vaccine distribution around the world, what's it going to take then to get things back on track and unblock some of these bottlenecks in the supply chains? I think there are two elements to the answer. One is to get, of course, get more vaccine out to the places where they're needed. But more importantly, in places like Asia, where the zero tolerance policy has caused economies to shut down, just even if you have one or two infections, ports are shut down because a worker comes in with a sniffle. Those kind of draconian policies, uh, because of the extraordinary fear of having uh, the COVID spread, uh, has cost e these economies much more in the way of jobs than the cost benefit would say it's worthwhile. So I think a reassessment of how you shut down an economy, why you shut down an economy, and what it takes to shut down an economy are key questions that have to be asked around the world. And we're certainly seeing that also inflation is now showing up across a number of goods. Walk us through the key sectors of concern. Well, Rochelle, I I've said it many times in this show, we can't call what we're seeing standard inflation. It's not the your grandmother's inflation where it's because of excess demand pulling up prices because there just aren't sufficient goods. Yes, there's a lot of demand as these economies are opening up, but the key element behind the higher prices we see today is the lack of supply and the bottlenecks that we see in the logistics. So when you look around the world, the shortage of chips that came about because of the shutdown in Asia uh, has led to a shortage of cars, and shortage of cars has pushed up car prices, especially used car prices. But what we're seeing now is that these bottlenecks are starting to ease up and used car prices, for example, have stabilized. They're no longer going up at 20, 30% a month as they used to. So what we are hoping for and what the central banks around the world are assuming is that these price increases are gonna be temporary. Um, they will stop increasing once supply chains come back online again. And I think that's what we're counting on to happen in 2022. And in terms of rising energy prices and disruptions in that regard, how are those being managed in various economies? Oh, yeah, you, that's a fantastic question, Rochelle, because energy crisis is something that is hurting economies around the world, China, U.S., Europe. Um, it used to be that the U.S. was a huge producer of natural gas, which could be shipped around the world to help countries like China shift away from dirty producing, uh, electric, uh, producing electricity with dirty coal to cleaner natural gas. Unfortunately, U.S. policies to stop the drilling uh, and shale production has also stopped gas production. And so the shortage of natural gas, both in, in China as well as in Europe, which is very dependent on Russia for its supplies, is causing price of natural gas to skyrocket, which is stifling the attempts of many countries to shift off of dirty electric producing coal generators. So then, and just very quickly then, in terms of the challenges for wealthier nations versus lower income economies, how do their pandemic recovery priorities differ? I think for the low, low income economies, they really have to make a hard choice between 
having their economies go on so that income can be produced for its people who are basically at the survival subsistence level, uh, whereas in other emerging economies that are further along uh, the development chain, they have better choices because they have other options to shift to different types of production that don't depend on people to people facing service uh, uh, type of, of uh, production processes. And, and there, COVID vaccines are helping a lot. So the choices are very hard for those in the emerging markets. And the key to their solution would be more vaccine supply.